Hey, what's up guys? It's Flex and welcome back. So before I start this video, check this out. Hey Google, open up Netflix. Pretty cool, right? And that's just one of the cool new features on the Android screen I installed on this car. So as you guys know, I recently installed an Android screen on this 2016 Mercedes-Benz C300. And I upgraded from a really small OEM screen that just was really limited in features and functionality. And all I have to say is I've been pretty happy with the performance and the features of this Android screen. And again, I wanna thank DMP Car Design for sponsoring me with the screen. So if you're not familiar with DMP Car Design, they're an online reseller for Android screens for many makes and models of cars and they also carry a lot of cool parts and accessories. So if you want more information on the screen in this video, or if you're looking for a screen or parts and accessories for your car, make sure you go check out DMP Car Design's website. I'll link it in the description below. And in today's video, I wanna go over the specs, features, and functions of this Android screen. However, I'm not gonna go over every little feature of the screen because there's just so much to talk about. I just wanna highlight the key items that's really important to me that I think you can benefit from as well. So let's first start off with the specs of the screen. The screen is a 10.25 inch screen running Android 10. The look and feel of the screen is almost like the OEM screen that you find in the upgraded facelift W205C class. It's a full HD laminate screen, so when you shut off the screen, it's completely black and it almost looks like it's a panel of the car. The interface of the screen looks just like the MBUX system and it's super responsive to touch. Again, I'm not gonna go through all the technical specifications of the screen, but I'll line list a few of them that's very important. First of all, the processor is a Qualcomm Snapdragon 625. This is an eight core processor and it has a max of two gigs per core. The 14 nanotechnology processor also produces less heat and it also uses less voltage, meaning the system's a lot more stable, it's more performance, and it will last a lot longer. The GPU uses Adrenal 506, which supports Ultra HD. The screen also has four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage, it supports 4G LTE, and of course it runs Android 10. So those are the technical specs of the screen. Before I get into the features and functionality, there's one thing that I want to mention to you guys. If you are interested in buying an Android screen for your car, make sure you buy it from a reputable reseller. And the reason I say that is because there's a lot of online resellers selling Android screens with fake specs. And what do I mean by fake specs? Well, there's a bunch of resellers that are actually taking the high-end specs and they're burning it into the software of the Android screen. So what that means is when the customer goes into the system information, they'll see the high-end specs, but when they go to use the screen, they'll realize the performance is really poor. That's because the engine inside that screen doesn't match up with the specs that's listed on the screen. Yeah, it's pretty sketchy. So that's why I always recommend if you buy an Android screen, go buy from a trusted reseller. And the good thing is DMP Car Design is a trusted reseller. They're not just my sponsor, but they're a great partner because they stand by their products. They sell thousands of screens for many makes and models, and they also install these screens on a day-to-day -day basis. You can go to their Facebook page or their Instagram page, and you'll always see them doing a brand new install. So again, word of advice, if you're looking to buy an Android screen, buy from a reputable, trusted reseller. Okay, so now let's go over the features and the functions of the screen. I wanna go over just some of the basics and some of the cool new features. So when I first turn on the car, the boot logo will come on, and then after a few seconds, it'll switch over to the Android main screen. So that boot logo is fully customizable. I actually custom mine to say Mercedes-Benz because we're in a Mercedes, so it just makes total sense for it to say Mercedes when it boots up. So now in the main menu, let me go through each of the icons. So the first icon is navigation. When I press that, 
I can essentially launch any navigation app that I want. I currently have it set up to Google Maps, but I can also program it to launch Waze as well. The next icon is the music icon. When I press that, it'll launch a player that will play any music stored on the screen or plugged in using a USB stick or a memory card. So the next icon is the telephone icon. When I press that, I can Bluetooth my phone to the screen and make calls directly from the screen. This is also the icon where I would connect my phone Bluetooth to the screen if I would like to play music directly from my phone. Next is the NTG menu icon. When I press this, it actually takes me back to my OEM interface. So what that means is when I'm in the NTG menu, everything works like it's OEM, but now it's just displayed on a larger screen. So the steering wheel buttons work, the center console button works, the GPS on the old system works, Sirius radio works, the backup camera works, everything works just like it's OEM, but now it's just displayed on a larger screen. And that's pretty cool. If you get tired of the Android screen and you just wanna switch back to your OEM screen, you can do that with a touch of a button. The next icon is a video mode. So when I press that, it launches an application that will allow me to play any video that's downloaded onto the memory of the screen or plugged in using a USB stick or a memory card. And the video will play in full HD. So the next thing I wanna show you is the Android apps. When I select Android apps, I can see all the apps installed on my screen. I also have access to the Google Play Store, so if there's apps that I want, I can download them right to this section. Just keep in mind that some applications will require the internet to run properly. So that means I either have to get a SIM card that has a data package that I plug into the screen, or I tether my phone using Wi-Fi to the screen so that way it's connected to the internet. If I didn't have any internet connection, I can only use applications that don't require an internet connection. Here are just a few of the cool apps that I have loaded on this screen. I have Netflix, I have Spotify, I have Pandora, I have Waze, and again, I have access to the Google Play Store so I can download a bunch of different apps. This is what makes having an Android screen really cool over a stock OEM screen. So next I have the phone link icon. All this does is it allows my phone to connect to the screen so the screen can display exactly what's on my phone. I can't interact with it on the screen, it just displays what's on my phone. I don't really use it, maybe you might find it more beneficial. So next is the dashboard icon. I'm gonna skip over that for now. I'll talk about that a little later. So next is the DVR icon. I don't really use this, but if I had an aftermarket DVR system connected to the system, I can control it right from this icon, and I can also view the videos right on this icon as well. And the last icon is the settings icon. So this will allow me to look at the system information, adjust the volume, play with the equalizer, and I can also select which backup camera to use on the screen. I can use an aftermarket camera, or I can select my OEM camera as well. So here are some cool new features on the new Android screen compared to the old screen that I had on my old W204C class. As you've seen earlier in my video, I was able to set up Google Voice, so that way I can control everything using my voice, which is pretty cool. There's also a picture-in-picture -picture option and also a split-screen option. So this way I can run one application on one side and I can run another application on the other side. For example, I can be using Waze on one side and the other side I can have a video playing for the passenger to watch. Also, in using an app on the screen, I can wirelessly run Apple CarPlay from my phone to the screen without any additional accessories, which is pretty cool. If I wanted to run Android Auto, I will need to plug it into the USB port. The cool thing about this Apple CarPlay app is as soon as I get into the car, it'll detect my phone and automatically connect me for Apple CarPlay. Also new to the screen is the dashboard icon. When I press that, now I can see my speed and my RPMs displayed really large on the Android screen. And it's real time, so when I'm pressing on the gas pedal, it responds immediately and it matches exactly my RPM and my speed. And also there's three display modes. I could put it on Eco, I could put it on comfort or I can put it on sport. And this is a really cool feature if you wanna show off with people in your car, you put it on sport and just start banging through the gears and they can see your RPM and your speed pick up right on the Android screen. So let's talk about sound. In the old Android screen system, 
If I wanted sound to come out of the Android interface, I had to go to the NTG menu and select auxiliary before I go into the Android interface. It was really time consuming and it was really manual. In the new Android screen, now it can actually do it automatically. So that way, if I'm in the NTG menu, all I need to do is tap the screen to go to my Android interface and the sound will automatically switch over to the Android interface. And the sound quality on the new Android screen is really good. It's really crisp, it sounds really good, and also I can use the equalizer if I wanna make it custom to what I like. Lastly, let's talk about controls. As I previously mentioned, when I click the NTG menu, I go back to my OEM screen, which means that I can use everything in my car just like it was from the factory. However, when using the Android interface, I can only interact with it using my voice, touching the screen, or using the scroll wheel and the buttons around the scroll wheel. Unfortunately, I can't use the buttons on the steering wheel because the car is technically in auxiliary mode. However, that's not a big deal to me because I could still use the scroll wheel to go through the icons and the options. I can change the tracks by pushing the wheel up or down. I could press the back button to go back. I could press the star button to go back to the home menu on the Android screen. I can even hold the back button for three seconds to get into the NTG menu if I want to go back to the OEM screen. Again, it's no big deal to me that I can't use the steering wheel buttons. I'm just happy to have the Android screen and have access to all these features that I won't get on an OEM screen. Well, there you have it. Those are the highlighted features, functions, and specs of the new Android screen. And if you want more information on this screen or any screen for your car, again, make sure you check out DMP Car Design's website. I'll link it in the description below they will be able to provide you with 100% support to make sure your screen is working 100% for you. Well, there you have it. I hope you guys liked the video. If you do, hit like below. As always, make sure you subscribe, and I will see you next time.